Hello, Steve. Thank you very much for this conversation this morning. Oh, afternoon, afternoon for you. Hi, Sebastian. I'm delighted to be here. It's always a pleasure to talk and I'm looking forward to some tough questions. Oh, okay. I, I don't have tough questions. Okay. They are oh, all really? easy okay. questions. That's a shame. Ones. Uh, you know, this pandemic okay. is in, uh, encouraging us, us all to be more connected and technology is a great tool in this process. So uh, thank you again to having this conversation for us. It's very important. We are a very uh, close partner to Canalyst Channels events and, and we want to know your vision and your opinion about all this situation. So could you give me a summary of the global and regional situation and let's focus on IT market according to your vision. What's the situation now? Okay, well, first of all, I think we all know about what's happened in the global pandemic. I think we should take a moment to remember the doctors and the nurses around the world and all the people affected by it, rather than just talk about technology. Some people are having a much more difficult time than us at the moment. But in terms of the technology market, we've really seen some big winners and some big losers. First in Asia, and then the virus kind of went to Europe and then it went to the Americas. So we've seen it in a succession of waves. But what we've seen is the arrival of lockdown has driven a work at home culture that has maybe would have happened over 10 years and it's happened in a few weeks, but not just a work at home culture, also a study and children at home culture. So the parts of the technology industry that have been winning so far is anything to do with enabling home work and home study. That includes notebook computers, monitors, keyboards, mice, displays, home routers, home Wi-Fi, security software, remote access software, Office 365, and then video collaboration tools like Zoom, Teams, Slack. There have been some major, major technology wins, and those companies that have adapted quickest are the ones that um, will be the most successful in what is for most companies, a very difficult time. But there's also some big losers. And the biggest losers are those who do anything to supply equipment to an office. Think of the photocopier industry. Nobody's using photocopiers. Nobody's buying new ones or buying paper or ink consumables in the office. I should have said, by the way, home, home printing is a big winner. That's good for HP, for Epson, for Canon, etc. But commercial printing, stopped overnight. Likewise, smart offices. Remember, we were talking about those last year. Group collaboration tools to sit around an office. That market stopped overnight. Upgrading networks in an office has stopped. And also a lot of enterprise server and storage projects have stopped simply because customers are too nervous to sign on contracts. So we've seen this wave go around the world. The, the PC industry, the Logitech, are totally short of products. Prices have even been going up due to the shortages. And it's no longer about who has the best price. It's about who can deliver fastest the right product that's been winning in the market. That is, that is really true. Uh, you, you also, I remember that you said in Canalys in, in Bogota, October last year, about uh, talking about distributors in Latin America, that uh, the smallest could become the strongest. And now they're taking an advantage of this situation that we are living. So what is your opinion now about distribution? Well, a, a few things have changed with distribution. Um, first of all, the good news is their value is more important than ever. As I just said, the key issue for distributors right now is do you have stock? And if you don't have stock, do you have the information about when you'll have stock? And are you able to share that information with your customers? So the tools and the electronic distribution of information is what might makes the difference between a winning distributor and a losing distributor right now. But there have also been some exceptional changes. Um, tech data is being acquired, most likely about to go through in the next few days, I think, um, by Apollo Private Equity. And perhaps more strikingly, Ingram Micro is owned by the Chinese conglomerate HNA. HNA has defaulted on its debts and is now under complete control of the Chinese state. So the overall owners of Ingram Micro are is the 
and control is H&A and, and, and the state. This is an extraordinary situation. The speculation then is that H&A will sell Ingram Micro as soon as they can, but that deal hasn't happened. It's taking a long time. It should have happened by now. And therefore there is speculation in the market that in order to maximize the price, for example, they might have to break up the company. And this is what we were thinking a little bit about last year, but obviously what has changed with COVID is um, H&A was very big in transportation, particularly airlines. And obviously the issues they were facing six months ago have become much more extreme, such as I say, they're now under government control. So this is an extraordinary situation and an opportunity for the local distributors to keep focusing on the customers, importing products. I think the local distributors are often better at finding different sources, being more flexible, more nimble than the bigger distributors. And um, Latin American economy is very difficult. Therefore, the multinational companies aren't so interested in investing in Latin America. And that is why all those reasons together, why we think the local distributors are the ones who will do best in Latin America in particular. We also see some of that in Asia and in Europe, whereas the US market remains very consolidated. Steve, we, we both are very passionate about technology. You have a lot of years in this industry. So when all this situation became a bad memory, what world can we expect? Well, there will be many changes. Hopefully some of those will be positive changes. I think we've all noticed the decline in traffic and the decline in air travel having a major benefit in terms of pollution, particularly in the big cities. More people can work and study at home. I think one of the predictions we have is the, the rigid concept of a five day week is over. We have to be more flexible. Maybe we have to work early in the morning. We have to work at night, but we don't need to be in an office five days a week. And a lot of companies are going to struggle with how often people should go to the office and how much they can work at home and try and find that balance. I think also if you talk about Latin America, I think we've seen a big um, need for more digital innovation. For example, uh, it doesn't make sense. I think in Argentina, you had this problem for pensioners to go and get their money from the bank and to stand in line next to other pensioners where they're at risk of catching the virus. So we need to enable more electronic transactions and some more online banking. And the real need to do that quickly is there now. And hopefully that will drive more innovation. So digital is the answer to many of the problems created by the virus. Having said that, there is no doubt that at least for 2020, we will be in a major recession. And really for the first time ever, that will be a global depression in Asia, in Europe, in US, and in Latin America. There are just so many people going to lose their jobs, so many businesses going to disappear that they will have a cycle downwards. And it's a little surprising the stock markets are so high considering what's ahead of us in the next three, six months. There will be a brutal time. But the companies that innovate and invest in digital will come out of this strong list. You know, one idea, for example, is maybe a city can decide Nobody goes to school or business or to business on a Wednesday. Wednesday is the at home day, parents and kids together. And then the other four days we go to the office, uh, much more flexible than we've been in the past and much more transactions for digital. I think where we have to be really careful and thoughtful is one of the dangers of what's happening is the gap between the rich and the poor. And I think in Chile, we already saw that last year with the protests and some other countries. Will, will enable what will happen is that the rich can work anywhere at home in a cafe because they're doing computer based jobs, digital based jobs, whereas the poorer people, but they might be the nurses who have to be in hospitals. They might be the factory workers who have to be in factories or the cleaners who have to go somewhere to clean. And so the society will, will split between those who are free and those who aren't free. And that will lead to more and more tension. And therefore the politicians need to think carefully about how they can reduce some of those issues. For example, by changing the taxation system. We, will, we have seen big winners, Mercado Libra, Amazon, big winners from what's going on, but they don't pay much tax. And they don't pay much tax because the cost of delivering is not taxed. If you own a shop, it's taxed. And 
so for example, and I think we talked about this in Bogota, we need to charge a tax on deliveries. So those companies who are using the roads pay a tax for using those roads. Otherwise, the whole of society is going to become unbalanced. Uh, so there are opportunities, but we shouldn't ignore that it's also a difficult time. We also have to think about our personal lives, keeping fit, eating healthy while we're stuck at home, not drinking too, drinking too much alcohol, and also trying to improve ourselves. And so what I've been doing is um, every day, yo estudio español todos los días con Duolingo. Es complicado, pero estoy mejorando. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. You know, I'm very excited because it's like being in an exclusive stage of Canalys Channel Forum with you uh, via Zoom. So this is amazing. So, uh, so and finally, are we meeting again uh, this uh, year in Mexico or what are your plans for the Channelist Forum? At the moment, we still believe we will be going ahead in Mexico in November and we are making all our plans to go ahead. Nobody can say 100% that will happen. And what we've announced is we will make a final decision in July. There is some good news that uh, the countries in Asia that have already opened up, China, but also Taiwan, Hong Kong now, Thailand, have seen a pretty good recovery. The number of deaths has dropped dramatically, almost to zero. And economically, um, they've seen a fast recovery. There's something we heard recently called revenge shopping. So everybody is let out of their house and they're so desperate they go shopping. And actually the retailers are seeing a, a boom from this revenge shopping. Also revenge travel. I haven't been allowed to travel for three months, so I'm going to travel like crazy now. So we hope that as we move to the summer, I think Latin America is one or two months behind Asia. There will be, well, people will start to be traveling. The economies will be opening up. We have to pray there isn't a second wave of infections. That's the big risk. And I say, we'll make a final decision in July, but our plan currently is to go ahead. Yes. Steve, again, thank you very much for this conversation. And, and I expect to see you next November in Mexico City and drinking some tequilas. Why not? Yeah, why not? And um, maybe we could do another video interview between now and November. Of course, of course. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very Have much. Have a nice day and be safe. Bye-bye. Thank you.